Well, we love you so much today. Thank you for connecting once again to the incredible Unity in the Spirit, Day 5, Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. Don, Mark, today's message is going to be so powerful. Do you know that the book of Acts said this about the disciples that were in the upper room? It said they were in one place and they were in one accord <laughs> and there was like flames of fire from heaven. You know what, today, we're in one place. You may not be standing here in the Legacy Theater with Don and Mark and our team, but wherever you are, because God is a spirit, because you are connecting, we are one. And I just have a feeling that there is an impartation of a new strength coming into your life, of a fresh baptism of the power of the Holy Spirit as we dig in to today's message. Yes, in God's revelation, because it's an impartation, will bring you into the balance because the one accord, what everyone I think is also concerned is we don't want to compromise. And for 34 years in 110 nations, I was able to watch Dr. Srillo in action, have a tremendous harmony and spiritual exchange, and yet not compromise. With one group, he would arrive after their ceremony. So it wasn't like he was endorsing necessarily one thing or another. Uh, there were other groups, I could tell, tell you the country I won't, where there was a, two waiters and one was from one and one was from the other. And you could tell their little struggles outweighed their sense of unity as Christians. And you bring Dr. Srillo into a situation like that, two of the leading ministers that were at war, they said, let's kneel down. And it's not about kneeling down before Morris Srillo, but he was God's instrument yeah. to bring them together. Amen, I amen. I and what I love about this revelation is, as God is taking us to a place of maturity, we don't feel threatened by what God is doing in the life of our brothers so and in the life of our sister, because one of the fruit of unity and maturity is that I know my own place. I know my own calling. And so knowing my own calling, the calling and the gift in the life of my brother and sister is not a threat to me, but it is just a, a way for me to become a better servant in my own position to help them, to serve them, so that the body of Christ can function together and to accomplish the will and the work of God. Mark, what you're saying is so rich, it's so powerful. It is what Brother Trillo has been saying to us throughout these first five sessions together. I just want you to see right now on the screen this scripture from Romans chapter 12. This is what Mark is talking about. I want to just take a minute before we go into the message to remind you of the Word of God. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. So like Brother Srillo says on the board behind us, all truth is parallel. The parallel that the Apostle Paul is making is that the body of Christ is as our physical body is in terms of different parts for different functions. So he says, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body. Somebody say we are many parts. We are many parts. We're, not all the, <clears throat> we're not all the same part. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. You belong to us. We belong to you. I love what Mark said. I want to get to this. In His grace, how many of you know it's not your works, but it's in His grace. God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. You don't have to speak out with more faith to try to make yourself something. Just be who God has made you to be and speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. And we want to see 
how the Lord is using your life. We want to know how God is using His special gifts in your life to serve others, to bless others. Please let us know in the comments. Let us know in the emails. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. I love what Brother Srillo said the other day. You're not going to raise somebody up by being critical. If your gift is to encourage, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. God has anointed parts of the body of Christ to rise up and to give and finance the kingdom of God. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. I love this. Just don't pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And this is what Mark was saying just a minute ago and take delight in honoring each other. Boy, I tell you what, that is what unity in the spirit is all about. That is what this school of ministry is all about. I want you to just go ahead and open your spirit wide. God is going to download a fresh power, a fresh love, a fresh revelation of the gift of God that is special in your life. If you're ready, I want you to join us in welcoming again God's servant, Dr. Morris Cirillo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter and the 21st, the 22nd and the 23rd verses. And so we'll all be United, say the word united. united. Now come on, somebody say it again. United. So that we'll all be united, we're going to, instead of reading it from different versions, in fact, I didn't even bring my other translations tonight. I just brought this one so I'd be good. Usually I come out here with a stack of Bibles. All right, we're going to read it and we're going to memorize it from the King James Version. So we'll all be sort of uniform. We're going to read it out loud right now, all together. John 17, 21. Read it with me now that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Now, we're going to commit those verses of Scripture. That's your spiritual assignment. The Spirit of God has been speaking to us here already in this conference. 
setting the stream. And this is what God has been saying to us. Repeat it after Brother Srila tonight. A powerful Spiritual force, Spiritual force is about to be released, is about to be released within, the body of within the body of Christ that is going to bring, going to bring the, greatest the greatest manifestation of the power of God the world has ever seen. There is going to be a power and an anointing of the Holy Spirit that's coming upon the living, powerful organism. Say that word, organism. organism. Put it deep in your spirit tonight. Before we go one step further, I want to make something very clear. It's not very easy to say, but I must say it in the Holy Spirit tonight. God never intended for the church of Jesus Christ to become an organization. I know that's very hard to speak because many of us are part of an organization. Somebody said to me, Brother Srila, world evangelism is an organization. That is true. But may I make a confession to you tonight? I got one. I wish you'd all follow her example. That's one of my dear little African ladies over there. You know, we get the mask off here in this ministry, right? Did we get the mask off last night? How many of you still have the mask off? Right. Mars Rilla would never be an organization if it wasn't for the legal requirements of the government of the United States. We don't need an organization to do God's job. I'm sorry. Now, you know why I say that? Because I know what an organization is. Do you know what an organization is? Let me tell you what an organization is. A legal definition of an organization is this. It's an administrative functional structure characterized on the complete conformity to the standards and requirements of man. I do not believe God's will for the church was ever to form 
a denomination. Now, please don't get me. I know I'm in trouble, Alex. I know I'm in trouble. But that's right. I'm not preaching against denominations. How many of you understand? I'm just telling you that I do not believe that ever was God's will for the church. Now, if we are into something that never really was God's will, it's going to have limitations. Now, come on, look at Brother Sol. Do this with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, all you Church of God, Assembly of God. Come on, get them on. Now, I, I want to honestly tell you tonight, I really don't have much problem with denominations. I honestly don't. I cooperate with them all. We go into a city to conduct crusades. We work diligently. You don't know it, but behind the scenes, before I ever go into a city for a crusade, we spend thousands of dollars in this ministry, sending in representatives, meeting with every minister of the major and all of the small churches, trying to bring them together, to love them, to fellowship them, to unite them. You don't know those things, but we do that in this ministry. Now, I don't have any trouble with denominations. Why? Because, let me tell you what a denomination is. A denomination is a religious organization uniting into a single legal administrative body a number of local congregations. Now that's really a simple definition of what a denomination is. I have no problem with that. But what I have a problem with is not with denominations, but with denominationalism. Now, let's find out what denominationalism is. Denominationalism is the emphasizing of denominational differences to the point of being narrowly exclusive. Now, I have no problem with a group of churches wanting to get together and calling themselves the Assemblies of God or the Church of God or the Four Square or the Baptist or the Methodist. I have no problem with that at all as a servant of God. But I have a problem with denominationalism where they highlight and they emphasize the things that make them exclusive to the elimination of the rest of the body of Christ. Now, you're wondering how I'm going to get out of this problem, the trouble I'm in. <laughs> I've got news for you. I don't intend to get out of it. We've only started preaching this end time message of God because there's a powerful spiritual force that's about to be released within the body of Christ that's going to bring about the greatest manifestation of the power of God that the world has ever seen. And we're not about to get out. Now, Will you do me a favor? I don't have time tonight, but will you do Brother Cyrilla a favor? How many of you have at home an amplified translation of the Bible? 
of the New Testament, anyhow. Let me see your hand. All right, will you do me a favor? When you get home, write this down. Read the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. And will you accept the admonition of the word of God where God teaches us that there is to be no exclusivity in the body of Christ? Just put that deep into your spirit. Will you do that? 2,000 years ago, you have heard Brother Srila say it. Those of you that have been in the schools of ministry from one end of the world to the next, you've heard me tell you, 2,000 years ago, the church of Jesus Christ was born. It was not born through great preaching. It wasn't born through organization. It was born through a unique characteristic that gave the church divine ability to reach their world for God. What most people don't know is that in the first 200 years after the death of Jesus Christ, within the first 200 years, the entire world was turned upside down. Come on, you don't believe it? Read it in the book of Acts. When Peter... And some of these men came and stood into these cities. The people feared and trembled and said, look out, here come these men of whom it is said they have turned the world upside down. Now, 2,000 years ago, the church was born. God breathed his very life. Look at the picture, 120 men and women in the second chapter of the book of Acts. They gathered together in the upper room in obedience. They had nothing else to go on but the direction of Jesus Christ. They went into the upper room. They went into the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus said to wait there. He said to tarry there until you are endued with power from on high. 2,000 years ago, the church of Jesus Christ was born. It was born through a unique characteristic. The Bible says they were all with one accord in one place. Now, I don't think when they got to Jerusalem, they were all in one accord. I don't believe it. But when Jesus was resurrected, not one Disciple or believer that we can find in the entire Bible believed that Jesus Christ was going to be resurrected. Before he went to his father, he told them exactly where to go to wait for him. That when he came out of the grave, he'd meet him in a certain place. He told them. Nobody went there. Nobody believed it. In fact, the women went to the grave to anoint him because they thought he'd be in the tomb. But when the 
disciples were sitting at meat in Galilee. And Jesus, with his resurrected body, entered into the closed room and rebuked them for their unbelief. And then commissioned them in the next breath to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He was not looking at what they were or what they possessed, but he was looking at the potential of what he was going to make of them. So he said, go into Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. John baptized you with water unto repentance, but he told you there's coming one after him whose shoes he's not worthy to bear. He's not worthy to latch. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I'm sure with that rebuke in their spirit, they went to Jerusalem not in one accord. I'm sure they went wondering. These men who argued about who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom. These men who walked with Jesus for three years and saw him open the eyes of the blind and unstop the ears of the deaf and cause the dead to come forth. Who ran from the cross? Who denied him? When faced with the accusation that you're one of him, I'm sure these men were not of one accord. But they went and waited in the presence of Almighty God. It's a tremendous thing if you'll only put it in your spirit, if you'll give God a chance to accomplish what he promises, if you'll only give him a chance, you'll be surprised at what God will do if you'll come together and wait upon the Lord and give God a chance to fulfill his promises. You know what the word accord means? It means to come into agreement. While they waited upon him, while they prayed, God had a chance to work in their heart and work in their life and bring them into one accord. in the world are you going to get into one accord, brother, when you can't even get to the pastor? You got to have six private phone numbers. You got to go through six secretaries. It's harder to get to most preachers than it is the president of the United States of America. You can't even get an appointment to say a word to anybody. The exclusivity that has come into the body of Christ is damaging the very fabric upon which the outpouring of the power of the Spirit of God was given for a manifestation to the church. Do you know why the enemy has infused the church with the spirit of exclusivity? You know why? You know why? Because he knows what the result will be 
if you and I ever get so interwoven in our relationships, brother, where we are one and we are in one accord and we are in agreement, brother. You know what the result was on the day of Pentecost when they got in agreement? God couldn't hold back the promise. Well, somebody just go ahead and lift your hands in the presence of God. I tell you, there is a fresh release of the peace of God, the power of God, the unifying work of the spirit of the living God working in you to bring you and I into a greater oneness, to bring you and I into a greater place of unity. Psalms 33 says how good and pleasant it is Brethren, dwell together in unity. Don, I love how Brother Solo just reminded us exclusivity is not God's plan. There is not any superstars in the body of Christ. You are a superstar today. If you are simply operating with peace in the gift of God in your life. Don, what a powerful message today. Yes, and of course, Dr. Srillo's way of summing it up with interdependency rather than exclusivity. And of course, Paul put his own little twist when he said it. He said, what things were gained to me, I counted loss. He rejected exclusivity. And of course, when Jesus prayed and said, I would that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in them, that uh, the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and then the glory which thou gavest me, I've given them that they may be one, I in them and they in me. Oh my God, I mean, I, I just get uh, completely overwhelmed that they may be made perfect in one. And then he says that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou lo has loved them as thou lovest me. Now, I'm still trying to fulfill because in 34 years, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, I never heard Dr. Srillo from a platform tell anyone to memorize verses, except right in this school. He would tell people, get on your knees and read Acts 1, verses 1 through 8. But he wants to put this inside of us in a living and vibrant way that brings us I mean, seated with Christ in heavenly places, just right in the middle of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Greg and Don, he says we should be not exclusive, but we should be inclusive. inclusive. And the message is unity in the Spirit. And it's unity in the Spirit of love. And when Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, and if they agree in the spirit of unity, heaven will be open for us. What a blessing for you and I. Wow. You know, Mark, I tell you, I feel the presence of God here, and I want you to pray in uh, just a moment. And I love the scripture in Romans where it talks about the different gifts, and then it says, take delight in honoring each other. We want to honor the gift of God that's in your life. Listen, not everybody that is connecting with this school of ministry is called to be a prophet to the nations or an apostle. Some of us are called to serve maybe children. Some of us are called to give. Some of us are called to teach. Some of us are called to preach. But you know, our mouth is just one part of our body. We have ears, we have hands, we have feet. We have the Spirit of God in us. I want you to share with us how God is using your life. Roy, 
Agbodo from Nigeria, I just want to thank you for this wonderful testimony. Roy said this, and you're seeing his picture on the screen right now. He said, dearly beloved in Christ, Calvary greetings. I write to appreciate the impact I'm receiving from these courses. Can I just say something? Thanksgiving confirms relationship. When God has done something in your life that you are thankful for, and you use your mouth like the nine lepers that were healed that never came back, but one came back to give God thanks. Thanksgiving is a good thing, and it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. I want to appreciate the impact, so we want to hear what God is doing. And sometimes when you share what God is doing, it even strengthens His work. And we would love to profile your story on uh, the Facebook School of Ministry, in the emails, on YouTube. But I love what our brother Roy said. He says, I write to appreciate the impact I'm receiving from these courses that I have been taking on a full scholarship. And that is right. Before Brother Shrillo went home to be with the Lord, he released our team to take all of the 10 core School of Ministry courses and to put them out in the clear, put them out across the world on a full, complete scholarship. We thank God for our partners. We thank God for many of you that are making it possible to sponsor this incredible school of ministry. It is making an impact in Roy's life. He says, it's transforming and changing my life. And then he says, here are some photos of a crusade we held at one of the communities in the eastern part of Nigeria. Now listen to this, this is your fruit. This is our fruit, this is Brother Cirillo's fruit. I love this, you don't even know how much it blesses us to hear these things, please. Don't hesitate, don't think something you're doing is small or something you're doing is insignificant. Uh, Greg, just one thing, while you're asking please. them, while you're asking them, this unity topic. We would not take it lightly if you just have an aunt that goes to a different church and you've been separated and through this revelation, it just, God puts you back together. And there's little Amen. practical things like that. Send them to us. Amen. He said, here are some photos of the crusade that we held in the Eastern part of Nigeria. He said, many gave their lives to Jesus Christ and God healed the sick Hallelujah. too. He said, to him be all the glory. He said, I look forward to a day when I will come to the Legacy Center and I'll shake your hands and I'll get to see my beloved mother, Teresa, and all the other members of your noble team. He called us a noble team. Wow, that's like, uh, we gotta walk worthy of that. That's gonna challenge us a little bit. And he says, I also look forward to being capped and receiving my certificate. And uh, you're seeing on the screen right now uh, an incredible picture from a recent meeting of about 30 of those who have graduated from the uh, Facebook Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. We can't wait to celebrate you the next time we are together at Legacy. That's why it's important that you get your emails. If you're not on the email list, send us a little note in the comments. We want to make sure that you're getting all of the updates. And he said, thank you and may God continue to bless you. This ministry will never die. Mark, I want you to close this. Amen, hallelujah. Prayer. Father, we give you praise and we worship you, Father, for this amazing revelation, for the reality of the unity in the spirit. And today, Father, we honor we honor the gift in the life of our brother. Yes. And we honor the gift in the life of our sister. Yes. Sister, we honor their calling, Father. And Father, as they wait upon the Lord, Father, we pray that you are working deep in their heart. Father, in the name that is above every name, that your divine love and that your divine purpose 
purpose will be revealed in their heart, Father. And by doing this, you will bring us the body of Christ in one accord. And we know that when this is fully completed, nothing will be impossible to the body of Christ to bring back our Savior and Master, Jesus Christ. We give you praise and we love you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, go ahead and give the Lord a good hand clap and praise. We love you all so very much. We cannot wait to see you next time. We're coming in for a landing. Use these next uh, few hours and between now and when we're together again to watch the messages again, listen to them again. We can't wait to see you on behalf of Don and Mark, all of our team here, Teresa, David, this is Greg Morrow saying, you are a part of God's end time plan. And God has not planned any defeats for you. We love you and we'll see you next time on Live From Legacy.